Good morning. Good morning. Hi, my name is Sarah G, and I want to welcome you all here this morning. I'm a sophomore, and this is my second year with the Unitarian Universalist Campus Fellowship at UNC Chapel Hill. We meet for an hour every Thursday where we have discussions and eat the delicious food which you all provide for us. So thank you for the cookies. <laughs> UU is important to me because it allows me to step away from school and engage in deeper conversations with like-minded friends. We are one of the only UU campus fellowships in all of North Carolina. This year we have selected readings and written sermons around the theme of intergenerational community and how these relationships have formed us as young adults and as UUs. We have chosen hymns we have learned as youth and are broadly familiar to many UUs. Through this shared language of music, we hope to open our discussion about our own personal histories and connect to the wider fellowship. On that note, I have two brief quotes to share with you today. The first quote is from Carl Chauvel. We are our past and our tradition as it meets the future. The second quote is from Stephen Colbert. There's an old saying about those who forget history. I don't remember it, but it's good. <laughs> Today, we hope to remember our history and share with you what intergenerational community means to us. Thank you. My name is Madeline Cook. Our chalice lighting this morning comes from George O'Dell. We need one another when we are in trouble and afraid. We need one another when we would accomplish some great purpose and cannot do it alone. We need one another in the hour of success, when we look for someone to share our triumphs. We need one another in the hour of defeat, when with encouragement we might endure and stand again. All our lives we are in need, and others are in need of us.
The words for our meditation this morning are from Jacob Trapp. If it is language that makes us human, one half of language is to listen. Silence can exist without speech, but speech cannot live without silence. Listen to the speech of others. Listen even more to their silence. To pray is to listen to the revelations of nature, to the meaning of events. To listen to music is to listen also to silence and to find the stillness deepened and enriched. We will now sit in silent meditation, followed by a musical meditation. Good morning. My name is Leah Belkowski, and this is my third time ever at this congregation. (laughs) And I'm Ellen, and I'm a member of this congregation. (laughs) We are both lifelong Unitarian Universalists, and we're going to share some of our reflections on what it means to participate in Unitarian Universalist community at different ages as different versions of ourselves. At the center of our faith is the belief that each person has a piece of the truth. To borrow a phrase from the Quakers, we each have an inner light, a spark of divinity that we are working to share with the world. 
By participating in multi-generational community and working actively to create opportunities for intergenerational community, we affirm that each person, no matter how young or how old, has valuable insight and wisdom, that we each have something to learn and something to teach. So we, the members of this campus fellowship, we are of a generation that is increasingly less religious and less committed to religious community. The Pew Research Center has been tracking religious life in America over the last decade, and they have some fascinating insights about religious belief and practice by generation, denomination, political stance, geographic area, and so on. It's really interesting data and, I don't know, fascinating sort of connections if you're interested in checking it out. Notably, Americans who are religiously unaffiliated, whether agnostic, atheist, or just not connected to a religious group, are a large and growing portion of our population. Fully one-third of my generation falls into this group. The thing to remember is that the unifying quality of this group is that they are unaffiliated. They don't belong to a religious community. But that's not to say that they are not spiritual or religious in some way. Almost 60% said they often feel a deep connection with nature and with the earth. One in five said they prayed every day. I was kind of surprised to learn that two-thirds profess a belief in God. And nearly 40% claim themselves as spiritual but not religious. These are people who overwhelmingly agree that religious groups serve a broader purpose to society, strengthening communities, organizing efforts towards justice, supporting those who are less fortunate. But they are not looking for religious community, term, turned off by the trappings of institutions, money, power, politics, rules. Given this sort of cultural climate, that one third of my generation, and I'd argue that it's probably even more at a community like the university, the question I am often asked is, why join a religious community? Why be a part of a church? And for me, that answer is largely connected to intergenerational community. Our culture doesn't make much space for inter, er, doesn't make much sense, or bleh, sorry. <laughs> Our culture doesn't make much space for intergenerational community that is not hierarchical. We spend much of our lives and forge many of our closest relationships with people who are close to us in age. But church bridges that gap. My spirituality is an inward individual thing. It's my practice, my habits, my way of being in the world. For me, religion is what connects my personal spirituality to a broader world. In you, my religious community, I find kindred spirits who are committing energy, towards a similar vision of what the world could and should be. And that's, the, that's a thing uninformed by age or generation, but undoubtedly strengthened by the broadening of our perspectives. As a religious community, there are two things that bind us to each other. First, we share that common spiritual ground. Second, we value being in community with each other. I am you, you, because I choose to be but also because of my parents' great wisdom or dumb luck, you choose, and they're over there. They can introduce <laughs> themselves, but I'm going to point them out. And they wanted to be a part of religious community, and they found Unitarian Universalism. For those of us who grew up UU, finding our place within Unitarian Universalist communities as adults, often in different congregations than the ones we grew up in, is an affirming, illuminating, and sometimes challenging experience. Growing into different roles and relationships, serving the community in different ways, both recommits us to the broader hope and vision of Unitarian Universalism and grants us the opportunity to understand our own religious and spiritual beliefs in new ways. In particular, one of the biggest differences in this transition is that as a youth, most of my peers, most of the people that I shared spiritual time with, for better or worse, had always been UU. That was their only experience of religious community. 
when we choose to be a part of uh, Unitarian Universalist communities as adults, we join communities with a much broader range of religious experience. This broader perspective has changed, in some ways, the, the way that I understand our faith. At the same time, though, I had an odd and sort of creeping realization at a point that I was finding myself in the minority often. I was one of the only lifelong UUs and surrounded by people who had broader perspectives of religious community, but it was in comparison in some way to the thing that I had always held sort of central to my spiritual life. So a lot of my focus within Unitarian Universalism in the last few years is working to understand why some of my peers leave and what role young adults can play in our communities. It's an issue that elicits a lot of hand-wringing, both in our denomination and in others. And I don't have the answer, but I do have some observations. Many, many youth in our faith, some estimates run as high as 95%, will leave our denomination as adults. One of the UUA's conclusions from trying to understand this exodus is that the people who stayed or returned to our religious communities typically developed during their formative years a deep sense of belonging, not just to their peers, but to the congregation at large. In essence, the UU communities that embrace their young people's energy and wisdom, nurturing their spiritual development, providing opportunities for them to lead, not only affirm our belief in being in covenantal relationships as essential to being a Unitarian Universalist, but they also contribute to a more enduring religious community. To speak from my own experience, uh, I come from Towson, Maryland, where I was enthusiastically raised UU by my mother, who is a director of religious education. <laughs> Growing up in the church, I think I took a lot of things about it for granted for a long time. And one of them was the intentionally intergenerational community that I had in my congregation, as well as in the broader context of UUs in my district, region, and around the country. <clears throat> As a child, being included and valued in my religious community didn't feel special, it felt normal. I didn't understand or appreciate the meaning of the word intergenerational until much later, although I grew up benefiting from the distinct efforts of many people within my congregation to create such an environment where people of all ages were valued. Most services, for example, opened with a story for all ages and singing out the children to Sunday school classes, which were taught by countless members of the congregation who volunteered. Others led OWL, coming of age, and youth group, putting up with our teen and preteen antics and angst to help us learn about ourselves, our faith, and our world. As kids, we were invited to help in the services by reading, singing, acting, and dancing. And every year, there was annual RE Sunday and a youth group-led service. Even when our skits were more earnest than well-rehearsed, and even when our songs were more spirited than lyrically intelligible, <laughs> the congregation always supported us with grand applause and praise. This kind of reinforcement from the adults in the congregation made us feel, as kids and later as youth, that we had an important part to play and were valued by the rest of the community. Mentored by the adults, we were taught by example that everyone's unique experience is an important part of the diverse and multi-talented community. And we were shown that our own skills and knowledge were valuable, that we were valuable to the rest of the congregation. I think I learned a good deal of self-respect from growing up like this, taught and supported not only by my peers, but by those from different age groups as well. 
Having felt the community's support from such a young age and seeing the various ways the adults in my congregation participated in the functions of the church, it felt natural to find my own purpose within the congregation as a young adult. I started working in the nursery, which introduced me not only to the youngest among our congregation, but also their parents, people who I otherwise would have had no reason to interact with and would have been too shy to talk to. I learned so much from these parents and from the kids, and it meant a lot to me to develop relationships beyond those with people my own age. Then when I left home, my home congregation for college, I distinctly felt the absence of intergenerational community in my life. Overwhelmed by the many new stimuli of college life and afraid to join a new congregation, I stopped going to church, but I soon felt very trapped in the college bubble of 18 to 25-year-olds. Interacting with only one age of person can become extremely insular. And I find that I'm happiest when I interact regularly with people of many ages because the exchange of perspectives, experiences, and wisdom is so much more diverse. And of all the communities I've been in, I feel confident saying that the UU community is one of the best to foster intergenerational relationships because of our shared values and touchstones. One of my favorite memories of church is from a few years ago, back home in Maryland, of a baby dedication. In this ceremony, with the new baby and the proud parents before us, the congregation stood and our minister led us in unison, not to dedicate the baby to the church, but to dedicate the church to the baby. We promised to support and nurture this little UU in every way we could, knowing that she was the future. The way she would see the world would be radically different than the way we did, but we could share the same values and faith. I love that the UU model is not to require a commitment from an infant, but to ensure first that her community (laughs) raising her is committed. The cycle of intergenerational community begins with the older generations respecting and committing to the younger, which teaches the younger ones in their turn to do the same for those who proceed and succeed them. We value, commit to, depend on, and love one another, and in result we build a community that is all the richer and stronger for its diversity of experience and perspective. A dear friend of mine, who was part of this campus fellowship group for a few years, but has since graduated, grew up with a mix of religious experience. He was baptized Catholic, attended an Episcopal church growing up, and went to a Lutheran school. His observations of Unitarian Universalism and of UU community were illuminating and an important perspective for me. For one, he remarked that everyone who grew up UU talked like NPR. (laughs) (laughs) To be honest, I don't really have a problem with a holy trinity of Garrison Keillor, Ira Glass, and Diane Rehm. I would be okay with that. (laughs) Um, But (laughs) more specifically, um, on a religious note, he was sort of (laughs) uncomfortable with the level of fluidity in spiritual practice and belief that some of us had. I've basically assumed a high level of uncertainty within my own beliefs. I know what I know now, and I know that it may shift in the future. But further, I know that there is a place for me within this community as long as I choose to claim myself as a Unitarian Universalist. Ours is a living tradition. We affirm a free and responsible search for the truth and for meaning. And because of that, we give value towards questioning. We create space for people to question each other, themselves, and the broader community. One of the most important experiences for me within this community over the last several years has been to facilitate coming of age with Marion. As a new or new-ish person in this community, it's sort of overwhelming the number of people here. And it, this, this program, Coming of Age, gave me an opportunity to connect with a cohort of youth 
and a group of committed adults in this congregation each year. I'm in my third year now doing it, and it's one of my favorite things. Um, working with these high school freshmen over the course of each year, we consider different topics about spirituality and religious community. Each youth connects with a mentor to think about these different ideas, to ask each other questions, and they forge these really amazing partnerships. They truly are partnerships. They are egalitarian, and both people are committed to sharing their perspective with each other. Our religious community is a place to meet each other where we are now, but also where we will be, further, al further along on our own paths of discernment and experience and belief. The intentional choice to create a religious community with a place for people of all ages is expressed in so many different ways in Unitarian Universalism from programs like Coming of Age and OWL to the active inclusion of RE students in services to the youth and young adult caucuses at General Assembly to conversations at coffee hour. The precedent for intergenerational community has been established already by the past generations. It's been maintained now by the current generation and will be passed down to the youngest. Small-scale actions of multi-generational community are all in service to a bigger vision of Unitarian Universalism. As UU adults lead, they empower us young adults and youth and even toddlers in the nursery to carry our faith into the future. We will lead by example using the skills and values that we have learned from our UU upbringing to face whatever the future brings. And now, would you please stand in body or in spirit and let us sing our closing hymn, number 346, Come Sing a Song with Me.
name is Emma Holcomb, and our closing words today are by Laura Hersey. As our lives span the years, so do they intercept and interlock with one another, that the generations seem not to be separate, but one. In their deeds and actions, their interests and motivations, the women of the past are as much a part of us today as they were in the beginning. <laughs>